位同事，我哋不如 members， 誒、uh, ，it's already the、uh, starting time， and we have formal quorum， so let's get started。Let me welcome all the deputations。They have come to speak to us on、uh, integrated education. We have one matter arising from the last meeting. Last time, Dr. Wong, Helena Wong,、uh, moved a motion. We couldn't handle that because uh, uh, the time was、uh, past the、uh, scheduled meeting time. So, one minute to、uh, explain your.、Uh, Motion, Dr. Wong.、Uh, Chairman, last time we heard from many deputations on the issues of concern to us, but we、uh, did not hear from the administration as to which department would take the lead、uh, to form a platform to take on board、uh, the concerns of us. So we'd like the Education Bureau to take the lead to set up an interdepartmental interbureau platform to take on board the needs of、uh, parents and students with、uh, special educational needs, and to review the、uh, provision of resources such as manpower and other measures in order to the. Review the effectiveness of integrated education. I hope members can support my motion. Comments from other members? Do I need to read it out again? It says that this、uh, subcommittee asked the education department to take the lead and coordinate the formulation of an interdisciplinary, interdepartmental working group to review the resources provided to. Special education, so that、uh, a more effective approach can be adopted for one-stop service to be provided to the students and youngsters with、uh, special educational needs within the year. So, comments. If not,、uh, then I ask the Under Secretary, Mr. Yang, to say a few words before we put this to the vote. Chairman, last time at a meeting, representatives from various、uh, quarters express、uh, the aspirations of、uh, students and parents in respect of、uh, SEN students. Some have have to do with、uh, education. Some have to do with、uh, the work of other departments, such as、uh, family service. And、uh, healthcare, we do have different departments to take forward、uh, different areas of work in terms of health,、uh, healthcare, and、uh, diagnosis. It may be more effective for the、uh, Department of Health and the Hospital Authority to take the lead than the Education Bureau, and they may have to the, decide the priorities. In accordance with the overall picture of healthcare provision, but、uh, if an issue is related to the education bureau, we are willing to take the lead. If necessary, we can involve other departments, and、uh, we can also adopt a multidisciplinary approach to improve、uh, the provision of、uh, education. So、uh, I think we're duty bound to do to do this if it's、uh, education related. I'm glad that、uh, the Education Bureau、uh, is willing to take up the responsibility of for all educated-related、uh, issues. But、uh, but we're talking about、uh, individuals, individual students who may have、uh, different needs. We want to make sure that、uh, education, the education goal, can be achieved for them. I welcome the.、Uh, Response you have given. In turn, in terms of integrated education, we do involve other departments. So,、uh, as long as the issues are related to education, we certainly take the lead. I now put the motion moved by Dr. 
Helena Wong to the vote. Would those in favor please raise your hand? I think this is a unanimous decision. So it's endorsed. No one votes against this and no one abstained. Now to the uh, pop agenda popper. We're talking about the difficulties encountered by the student with uh, SAN, especially those with uh, autist autism and uh, emotional and behavioral difficulties as or communication difficulties. Some 50 individuals and deputations are in attendance today. Uh, of course, uh, uh, I welcome them all. This is going to be a long meeting. Uh, it's going to take us four hours, so it's going to be hard work for all. The Secretariat has uh, done or it can, but there's no other option than the present arrangement. There would be a short break between the two sessions. I understand that uh, the administration has uh, given us a paper, but time is limited, and uh, these deputations uh, are very sincere in coming forward, so I don't want to give them uh, speaking time of under three minutes. So if the administration doesn't mind, I would uh, do away with the introduction of paper bit and uh, proceed to the deputations uh, giving their views directly. Two sessions, and uh, in each session there will be a time for members to raise questions and for the administration to respond. So I hope the administration will be able to uh, respond to views expressed by our deputations, and better still, if there's some... Uh, dialogue, uh, it would be even better. I would like to remind deputations and individuals in attendance that your speeches are not protected by the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance. Make the best use of your time, please, and uh, still better, please give us your written submission. Let's have the first deputation. First, we have Mr. Joshua Lee from uh, Civic Party. My name is Joshua Lee uh, from Civic Party. Party. I want to talk about uh, the views with regard to these uh, students with SAN. First, although in the policy address, uh, mainstream uh, primary and secondary school will be given a higher grant from one million, uh, it would go up to one point five million dollars. It sounds good, but uh, only very few schools are getting the maximum grant at the moment. Uh, who must admit 75 cent students before they can get the maximum of $1.5 million in grant. If there are only a few of them, then uh, the grant will not be uh, sufficient to employ one, uh, one more teacher or to engage other employees. Uh, they may not even have money to organize uh, an additional seminar. So the Civic Party wants the per capita uh, assistance be increased and also that there should be great big, better monitoring of the way the grant is used. At present, the education system is uh, very much uh, dependent on uh, exam scores. But for sense students, the inflexible examination means that they are sacrificed. According to the Hong Kong EAA, for autistic students, the, the authority would only extend the uh, exam time by no more than 25 percent uh, for for them. And uh, also a psychiatrist uh, issued uh, within three years of the examination will be required. So some uh, SANS students uh, will need to queue up again in a public hospital for the assessment and the report. Uh, is this really going to help them? Because uh, for autistic students, there's no way they can recover. So is that really to get to present a, a, a report uh, dated within the last three years, the Hong Kong EAA should uh, consider other ways, more ways, to help these students. It's important that we give all, uh, all candidates, all students a level playing field. But is there the current uh, system fair to SA, SA, SAN students? The 
through integrated education, uh, send students can be admitted to mainstream schools so that they can uh, interact with uh, ordinary students. It's very good for them. But stu teachers are not uh, equipped with uh, expertise to teach these students. Parents are not getting proper support. Sans students, autistic students may not be able to adapt to the normal uh, environment. The integrated education is just an additional option, but you leave these uh, sans students to their own devices. This is very irresponsible. Next, we have uh, Mr. Yao Xu Ho. Good afternoon, Chairman and members. I speak as a member of with uh, of a student with ASD, autistic spectrum disorders. I would like to talk about the bully suffered by my child because these uh, ASD students have their own to handicap. And because of the failure in the education system, they are now being bullied, and they are they suffer emotionally and physically. So please uh, consider their plight carefully. ASD students can be very capable if they get get uh, proper guidance. They can become the very the capable students. My, ch my, ch my son was diagnosed uh, at a young age, and if uh, he enjoys uh, emotional stability, he can achieve very good marks. He once uh, achieved first in four subjects, but because of the disorder, he's always ridiculed and bullied. In March this year, three students uh, attacked him. He was sent to the A and E department of hospital, and then he had a heart problem. Then, after that, he was afraid to go back to school. He hasn't gone back to school since March. He's really terrified, and so far, the school has expressed very little concern, and they are very bureaucratic. They refused to provide sufficient support to us. Last week, the government, well, I made a request to the school that a complete set of the notices and homework slips be handed to us. We wanted to submit the homework on time, but unfortunately, the school has been telling me that they refuse to hand us some of the homework, and they do not agree with my son participating in the assessment exam in June. My son has been bullied, and he asked to switch to a different school. But if he misses the exam, it means that the child will lose out on his qualification. So I think integrated education. What kind of environment does it provide to the child? If a child becomes a target of bullying, it brings shame to integrated education. Madam Yao, concerning that case you mentioned, I hope that the Education Bureau will follow up in a minute if necessary. Please also submit the information to our colleagues. I'm sure many members here are willing to follow up. We also have a complaint division and we can deal with it as a separate case. Thank you for your comments. Next, from DAB, Mr. Vincent Chang. Yes, I'm Deputy Spokesperson for Education Affairs. Today we're talking about special needs and children with special learning difficulties. It is a very pressing matter, and the Education Bureau should realize that the number you are calculating concerning children with difficulties is actually an underestimation. I've been quite experienced in this because I have a friend who has an autistic child at the age of two. The family faces great up difficulties, and I see there are many parents here today. I'm sure they will also share the comments about the challenges. Just like my friend, he has to pay seven to eight thousand a month 
to educate his child, but he doesn't really know what to do because in the community there are simply too many programs, and to him, it creates great pressure. He feels that maybe this is good for my child. So today, concerning this discussion, the DAB has the following suggestions. There are seven points: early identification and early support. All along, we've been asking for these. But the government in the past, when it comes to comprehensive development of children in terms of assessment and, and identification, we know that it takes a very long time. Sometimes a child has to wait for many years, and he's already promoted to primary school. For learning difficulties, we need to provide early support. So we have the following seven points to make. First of all, we hope that you can review. Services for children with difficulties and shorten the waiting time, so that they can get timely help. Second, a professional team should be set up for specialists taking care of children with difficulties, including psychologists and audiologists, so on and so forth. Thirdly, teacher support. Special education should be provided to teachers so that they understand how to. Deal with children with special needs. Fourthly, for institutions providing services to children with learning difficulties, they should get additional assistance so that early support and identification can be carried out. Number five, there should be a mechanism set up to deal with interfacing children from kindergarten to primary level, so that they can follow on the records. Number six. For the longer term, we need to implement measures to promote early intervention. Seventh, we need to do something to allow teachers to understand better about children with learning difficulties. We need to do more publicity. We are going to provide the written submission to Lashko later on. Thank you, Mr. Chang. Next, Ms. Doreen Ho. I'm just an ordinary parent. My child doesn't have autism, but in my child's school, there are quite a few students with autism. So I strongly feel that the parents of these autistic children face great pressure. I would like to say two things. First of all, about the curriculum for autistic children, the curriculum is not fair because their right to learn has been taken away. Right now. In the primary curriculum, just like the secondary one, is exam oriented. We're talking about a number of exams and TSA at P3 level. Education is about teaching difficult things and pushing children to do things quickly. For autistic children, however, it is very difficult for them to rush things. It's difficult for them to stay focused. In the classroom, so to these children, in terms of learning, it is already unfair. I personally think that the curriculum needs to be reviewed. It needs to be reformed because it is too academic. We always talk about encouraging children to be caring, so that they understand the community, they can accept different people. I think these are the true qualities that we need to inject into our children. But in the primary curriculum, all I see is that they are chasing grammar. They want to know vocab, and they have to do everything quickly. It is not about spiritual growth. So I hope that the education bureau can inject new resources to remove the TSA and broaden the curriculum, so that we can focus more on personal development. It is just like. Um, common sense for children. Children are pushed to memorize all the facts for the exams. But what about personal growth? What about learning about your community, learning about different ethnicities, knowing the world? Around them, there are people that need to know better in the same classroom, but nothing has been taught about this. Even for the parents, I see that parents with、uh, autistic children they face great pressure. When the children do something that cannot be controlled in the classroom, disrupting order, 
other parents will complain and ask the school to take those students out of the classroom, taking away their right to learn. So there should be resources dedicated to educating the students and the parents. I have never seen such education from the school about what autism is all about. Thank you, Ms. Ho. I hope our colleagues from EB have heard about this. Parents know what they're talking about. Next, Ms. Gloria Wu from Society for the Welfare of Autistic Persons. Good afternoon. I'm from the Society for the Welfare of Autistic Persons. In terms of socializing, behavior, learning, autistic children face many difficulties, just like other speakers have pointed out. We can see that in terms of school support system, support for teachers are all lacking. So we have the following recommendations. First of all, supporting the school. The EB has stated previously at LegCo that educational psychologists will be serving 8 to 10 schools. This is truly lagging behind compared to schools in the United States. Each EP should focus on 500 to 700 students. And previously, during the Chong Shui Ha era, the EB also stated a ratio of 1 to 6. So we are actually regressing so that students with autism are not able to get direct services from EPs. So we suggest that we need to reduce the ratio to 1 to 3 or 1 to 5 so that each EP can make contribution in each school. Secondly, there should be extra support to general knowledge subjects because autistic children cannot see the world through our perspective. Sometimes they will focus on too many details and they forget the focus of learning. So we should rely on general knowledge subject to test them on such knowledge. We have to pay attention to the special learning needs of autistic children. So we urge the administration to set up a professional task force to tackle children with autism and issue educational kits. We also need to refer to the EB's multi-tiered support system for Chinese language so that we can fully support the learning needs of autistic children. Secondly, it is about support for teachers. When it comes to integrated education, many things are involved and sometimes teachers are overwhelmed. We need to have SEN coordinators in each school so as to provide better follow-up services to students. We need to understand that students, parents, and teachers are trapped in a very difficult place. I urge the administration to consider our suggestions to allow these students to make contribution to the society. Next, Mr. Chen Chi Wai. Chairman, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to speak on three main points. First of all, if there is no true integration for students with special needs, what can be done? What about the social worker ratio in schools? Sometimes we need social workers to follow up on some matters. And right now, one of grants have been given to them, but it is not enough. And then I want to say that 12 million has been allocated to VTC to provide SEN related support. But until now, I do not see any courses related to SEN being run. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Mr. Chen. Next, from Autism Hong Kong, Mr. Francis Yu. Members, guests, I'm here not just to talk about my views, but also to share a story. 
because it's boring to listen to complaints for hours. My story goes like this: We have seven million people on Hong Kong. We are truly blessed to have Western influence. We claim to have a comprehensive safety net. We also have a strong foreign exchange fund. We have tens and thousands of professional social workers and hundreds of professional teachers, hundreds of government organizations and parents associations. So when it comes to this global health crisis, we call this autism epidemic. It seems that no one really sees this. In March 2013, according to a report issued in the United States, there is one autistic child in every five children. In South Korea, in 2011, they carried out another survey, and it was 1 to 38. Hong Kong has been doing very well. And then in 2007, there is this autistic youngster called Tsang Ai Hong from Singapore. He came from far away to Hong Kong, to Macau, and also to the mainland to do some sharing sessions of his personal experience. He also published some parents' guide to promote knowledge of autism in the community. So as a prosperous society. When it comes to autism epidemic, the government, different organizations, our professionals are still turning a blind eye to this. It's very sad. Cheng Ai Hong was able to explore the issue to its core, and he was there to share his experience. But unfortunately, we have tens of thousands of families with autistic children. We have to rely on someone from abroad to take the lead. So perhaps it is acceptable for those organizations in the mainland, but for the local ones, it is rather absurd. This is why you see this receipt in front of me. Concerning integrated education policies, we urge the Education Bureau to do what they said they would do. For other details, I won't go through them. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Yu. What about the bottles in front of you? I know that autistic people have been represented today. I know there are many more who cannot have the opportunity to come. The 10 bottles represent them. They are trapped in their own worlds. Hopefully through our government and different organizations and families, they would get proper care and development. These are my autistic friends. Thank you, Mr. Yu. Next, Distinctive Learning Society, Mr. Paul Wong. Distinctive Learning Society in 2009 started developing a distinctive learning social worker system. We provide services to parents and students related to integrated education, and we also have small group support for special children. We reach out to different districts covering those with sufficient resources and insufficient resources. We pay attention to different families with uh, autistic children. Early identification and intervention is the key and consensus in dealing with children with special needs. For primary and secondary levels, we have um, relevant funding support. But for preschool level, there is a serious lack of resources. Our society would like to express three main points. Early screening. This is extremely important. Early identification and intervention would be the guiding principle because during their early ages, if children receive special training, the outcome would be much better. Secondly, if they only get treatment after they feel frustrated, 
we will not be very successful. An early screening in Hong Kong is only available at the primary level. For preschool children, they can only rely on their luck. The parents will try to identify the special needs of the children according to their capability. And then about parent and school collaboration. Parents are extremely important in promoting development of students with special needs. Parents should understand what resources are available in the schools and in the community. Parents should understand their rights and responsibilities. The government can take initiatives to assist schools to organize parent school collaboration and associations. Thirdly, is community education. Integrated education must be implemented through community or public education. Now, whether IE can work depends very much on whether the public can accept the idea. So we must promote uh, the right concepts, and this is incumbent on the government. Now, the government departments can do it through many channels um, so that the public can understand about the um, concepts and the actual situation um, on IE. Now, a number of NGOs and self-help groups and academic bodies are paying attention to special needs children. So we suggest that the government should uh, subsidize these organizations and implement volunteer programs um, so that the the special needs children can integrate into the community. Thank you very much. Then next, add out value association, Mr. Yu Kai Lang. Well, our association is concerned about the um, attention deficit uh, problems among adults. I would focus on emotional problems. Hong Kong's psychiatric services may make mistakes in judging the patients and they will feel that or believe that ADHD is an emotional problem. I want to share my own experience. ADD persons may not have hyperactive disorder, but then well, on the surface, they don't have any impulsive behavior, but deep down inside, they are very um, not at ease and have a lot of impulse, and they are stimulated easily. And then that will degenerate into emotional problems in the long term. Now, for Hong Kong, while well, I am a patient myself, and I have been in contact with many patients of similar kind, um, no matter they are children, secondary schools, or uh, university students, and pe or people of my age, they may suffer from ADD. But then they are misdiagnosed as uh, having emotional problems. So that same goes for myself. Uh, in 2011, in the psychiatric services of public hospitals, I was diagnosed as having serious emotional problems. And in one of their meetings, I talked to them. And then I found, they found that I missed a, a handing in school work when I was young. And then they found that I have attention deficit problems. Now, because I have grown up as an adult, there is nothing much that they can do. Now, up to 2012, I came across this book about ADD among adults. This is called uh, uh, Getting Good Grace Irrespective of Whether You Are having attention deficit or not. So I found that I exhibited 95% of the characteristics mentioned. So um, once I was diagnosed as having this ADD, my self-confidence came back. Now, when I talk to uh, peers, people having the same problem, they also exhibited a lot of um, emotional uh, problems, like myself. And I talk to parents and I ask them not to treat this ADD as a, an emotional problem. And these parents uh, became more at ease in their mind and they know how to deal with their children. And in my personal experience, I also found that schools have neglected the needs of these people. Um, a Form 3 student uh, was having very poor results. Only several 
well, he passed in only several subjects. With ADHD, uh, students are easily stimulated, and the parents are very worried. And that if a student uh, studies in a prestigious school and then he switches to another school with a lower banding, so how will the student face uh, such a situation? I believe that uh, when a student gets to senior secondary school or gets to into a university, their needs will be neglected. So my question for the administration is, do you have any resources to identify adults with such problems? Now you are committing so much resources to children. Uh, what are you going to do about um, such problem among adults? Are they being neglected? Thank you, Mr. Yu. Dr. Fan Tat Wang, Hong Kong Autism Awareness Alliance Chairman. I'm from Hong Kong Autism Awareness Alliance. Well, integrated education is not a choice but a policy. Many parents and teachers will think that uh, SEN students should have be educated together with uh, other children and as e n students should have equal rights and i e is a step for building a harmonious society now the condition for implementing i e is that we should provide as adequate support for parents and teachers and students. Our alliance has four suggestions to make apart from the present resources. A lot of the autistic uh, students uh, behave, uh, behave badly, have behavioral problems, and that have to do with their mental problems. And then, and that is a result uh, because they're in miscoordination among various uh, faculties or systems in the society, like the social welfare system, education system, public awareness, and so on. So we need experts who n have all sorts of knowledge to uh, tackle this and through a case management approach they can support uh, parents, students and teachers. Now the expert team should comprise uh, CP, uh, social workers and so on. And that goes beyond what uh, a school has as far as its resources are concerned. Secondly, IE uh, needs uh, home school collaboration. Now, how can we make the family collaborate with the school? What's most important is that we need to provide support to the families. While the families uh, face a lot of challenges and support to family members is important, we must provide them with continuous counseling so that uh, they will not uh, be discouraged uh, and then the potential can be developed uh, to the fullest and then if we can provide support to them then um, resources can be reduced thirdly we can um, try to launch a medical voucher for purchase by the families and that can um, target the actual needs of the families and through voucher scheme the we can encourage private and public uh, service providers to participate in the system and that would also um, lessen the problem faced by schools in allocating resources. Lastly, we should also provide support to other families. Can we build an inclusive campus? We must organize activities on schools and through teachers uh, explanations uh, other members of the school will be able to understand what autism is all about so that they can um, support instead of um, resist the autistic children this has been neglected for a long time so uh, various organizations have been organizing many activities on the World Autism Awareness Day, like essay competition, drawing competition, and so on. And we've uh, achieved good effect on that. So we suggest that the, the government should allocate resources to support activities organized on the World Autism Awareness Day on the 2nd of April. Well, I've participated in that uh, many years. I support your proposal. Next, Ms. Enki Ao from a concerned group of characters. Good afternoon. 
on behalf of the concern group, I would like to lay out our concern, and that is liberal study has become a compulsory subject in senior secondary school education for admission to university. Uh, well, our parents are very concerned about this because our we are worried that our autistic children can't pass a subject and then they might not enroll in a university. We noticed that the EDB has talked about the characteristics of liberal studies, and that includes uh, un identifying your uh, multi identity, analytical thinking, understanding the world, seeing th things through multi perspectives, and making various judgments. And also, there are elements about self management thinking up solutions to problems, um, communication skills, and ability to collect information, and so on. I want to say that autistic students, they have this uh, problem in central integration, and that's a congenital defect. So they are constrained in their thinking ability. For example, they can't do, deal with a lot of analytical um, situations or identify or assess uh, information. They have problems with um, a space and distance, and they have problems with abstract contracts and instincts and so on. They are lacking behind the ordinary people. So with all these constraints, uh, they will be having a difficult time in the examination because the HKEAA requires that autistic students must pass liberal study subject before they are admitted to university. So for autistic students, that is very difficult. So I hope that you can appreciate that autistic students students are very poor in their logical thinking. The world is different from ours. Well, they focus on details or fermentic, fermentic parts, and teachers sometimes criticize them for paying attention to the things that are not important. So autistic students, how can they meet the requirements of a liberal sub studies uh, subject? So I have several questions for the administration. Under the present system, can the administration consider when autistic children take liberal studies exam, can their special arrangements be made to accommodate their needs? Say, can they be allowed to study subjects in universities which doesn't require multi perspective thinking? What I'm saying is that the, the administration can should help our autistic uh, autistic students to um, enter university and not rule them out. Next, Miss Peng Siyao, I have a, an autistic kid. My child studies in a primary school. Regrettably. I see many students who have not been identified early who are actually autistic or having other disorders. I know that autism is among all the SEN disorders can be identified the earliest. But then for MCHC, their inspection, they are doing a simple assessment for you. Now, if a child can't do or um, that sort of exercise, anyone that will know that they have a problem. But the question is, st students who have SEN are now often identified by kindergarten teachers. Do they have the adequate knowledge to s do such identification? Now, even if the kindergarten teachers tell the parents about the identification results, will the parents listen? So this is a question. So can the administration consider um, conducting a full uh, review of all 
uh, kids in preschools because we need to identify these uh, students or children early so that we can provide intervention as early as possible. Why can't we do that? Now, also uh, for pri uh, kindergarten children um, promoted to primary school, and because they have difficulties in communication, um, they have uh, easily misunderstood, and they they are um, sort of rejected by uh, students and teachers. Now, integrating education is all about accommodating them and providing them with counselling. So. Why is that not happening? Why isn't why isn't there is a good interface between kindergartens and primary schools? Now, why is it that the kindergartens fall under the SWT and not the EDB? Shouldn't the EDB be looking after kindergartens? So, shouldn't the administration set up a interdepartmental body to deal with IE? so that our children will not be kicked around from one department to another. I think to me this already is discrimination. If we can have one-stop services from uh, kindergarten education to primary education or even universities, then and if a child can have his own IEP, then that will help him a lot. If one-stop services can be provided. I think 15-year free education should be implemented. I want also to talk about um, professional training for teachers. Sorry. Thank you, Ms. Pang. And then Labour Party, Chang, Mr. Michael Chang. I think the parents will be talking a lot about the servers and the systems. They have a lot of complaints. We've heard many of these before. So for Labour Party, we want to reiterate several points for the administration's attention. Overall, when we talk about IE, what is the objective? We now see that the surface is just a problem-oriented uh, approach. And you you talk a lot about what uh, difficulties or disorders the students have. You are just enhancing the stigma on these students. And actually, the parents and the students have lost their self-esteem. I think their fundamental changes should be introduced in a lot of aspects. I want to highlight a few points here. Uh, a doctor has just said that in our services, should we extend our service from the individual to the family? Because the family uh, spends a lot of time with the, with the children, and family plays an important role. Uh, today we're talking about ASD children. And many studies show that the parents, and especially the mother, and at the um, what well, we'll be facing a lot of uh, pressure, including uh, postnatal depression. The prevalence rate is high, and if the child has been identified or diagnosed as having autism, then the mother is usually not getting any support. And in many cases, um, a child may have grown up to uh, into his teens. The mom. Uh, doesn't know what autism is about still. So the services provided the, to the family are grossly inadequate. And also professional uh, training for teachers. Teachers don't know what the problem lies. Well, apart from students displaying uh, uh, very obvious in symptoms for other types of disorders like Asperger's syn syndrome. They may be diagnosed at a later stage, uh, say, by the teachers or the social workers. But then the teachers and social workers have know nothing about SLI or Asperger's syndrome. So the Often the social workers are the first people who can help parents, and they are uh, playing an important role in helping the parents. But then the teachers or the social workers become the 
the the the uh, the, the people who are uh, victimizing the the parents. Now, I want to talk to about bullying on campus, and as young students have weak communication skills, and when they grow up, they um, are afraid of interacting with people. And that has to do a lot with uh, being bullied on campus, and they had nowhere to turn to for assistance because um, as young students uh, didn't really know how to seek help. Well, I'll be very quick in finishing off. Um, how school approach, the guidelines uh, drawn up by the EDB, the objective here is to uh, help students parents and teachers to appreciate differences among students. But regrettably, we don't see any of that happening here in our existing education system. Next is HKMLC Queen Mode Secondary School Principal Ms. Young Ching Han. I'm a frontline education worker. I am very interested in integrating education. My school doesn't have a number of cases, uh, um, so I'm interested in hearing about the discussion of the subject. As an education worker, I support integrated education. So several years ago, when EDB requested that 5% of the teachers should undergo training, our school was willing to do that now, but because of a timing problem, and that because there was a change to the NSS, and then teachers had to spend time preparing for the new exam. Now, N, the new NSS has been implemented for one year. Many more teachers now willing to receive training in that regard. Um, I know that teachers are improperly equipped at the moment, so I want to talk about two. Points. First, assessment. We are not professional enough. Uh, we are very happy that there are EPs in the school, but then they stayed for too short a time in the school, and they just uh, visit a, a, a school for 20 times a year. We see, uh, and we need to train our teachers, and we need to adjust our structure and set up an SCN team uh, for further development and fun night. Uh, Colleagues have to handle cases. Time is so limited. So the government should provide uh, more the support if resources permit. Assessment is important. Some of these uh, SEN students have been identified as P6. And if they are willing, to, the information will be passed on to secondary schools. But many parents uh, are not uh, willing to disclose the information. We will ask uh, all the new students, but sometimes they choose not to tell us what they have uh, gone through. And so assessment will only come at a later stage, and many opportunity lost as a result. And so I think. If parents want to get more help for their children, they should uh, cooperate with the school. And we have uh, problems with privacy. We would like to get more guidance in offering care. Actually, the non SEN students are also the affected. So we have to promote uh, acceptance while not disclosing the students' uh, SEN status. This is going to be difficult. If we have uh, isolated cases in different grades, it will be difficult to have a comprehensive SEN curriculum. Uh, first of all, not many teachers are, have been trained, and they are responsible for different uh, courses. I hope Education Bureau, uh, with all the its experts uh, would uh, come up with uh, reference material so that we can uh, make adjustments and adaptations in the light of uh, school environment. And uh, better still, if uh, the materials uh, would uh, enable us to offer assistance for uh, sitting for examination, public examinations. I'm sorry that I have to tell you that uh, I am also very sick. I don't know whether I would have the another chance to talk a bit. 
to talk to you about my child, a sent child. I hope my child would uh, live uh, an honest life uh, without feeling any shame. As a mother, uh, I have uh, given up everything I've got. I'm not working. Uh, in order to take care of my child, because I don't want uh, my child to be a burden of a negative asset to this society, so I hope uh, officials uh, would uh, be willing to listen to us. My my son is eight years old. He he was uh, diagnosed with a developmental. To, uh, Problems in 2008. Well, I I have high IQ, high EQ, and so on. And uh, for those who are under 12, the MTL fare concession doesn't apply to us. We have to get five days of training a week, uh, emotional the therapy, and so and the school attendance, so on and so forth. And the parents and the and uh, the, the child are not qualified for the uh, f uh, f concession fare unless you're over twelve and you're diagnosed, you are you're certified as a disabled person. Um, uh, I got this from SWD. The for the higher DAA, you have to prove that the person requires constant uh, attention, much. My son requires constant uh, attention, but he only gets an uh, ordinary DAA. According to some surveys, uh, we have to spend some eight thousand dollars per month on on my son. Uh, in my case, uh, it's a uh, fifteen thousand dollars. The the uh, one charging the lowest fare for speech therapies is a uh, a few hundred. Every forty-five minutes, our cho our ch these children require continuous uh, therapy during the uh, golden period for the uh, training. So I hope the SWD can at least uh, upgrade the DAA to the higher DAA instead of. Uh, Offering living supplements and so on that will require a long, long discussion. So, sorry, the chairman, I need some more time. Sorry, Miss Poon, time we have to management time. I see that you have a written submission. I think members. And uh, official here would uh, make reference, would take note of your recent submission. And let, I will wrap up very quickly. I would like to thank teachers and schools for their work. If the Education Con Bureau continues to shirk, off, shirk your responsibility and ask them to uh, find, fend off, fend for themselves, many schools uh, would uh, turn these uh, SEN students away. Then you need to set up more special schools. I think parents and everyone concerned with the welfare of uh, these students should continue to work hard. Next, we have Miss uh, Young Lai Ching from the Hong Kong Occupational Therapy uh, Association. I represent uh, frontline workers. We have been providing different uh, therapies and training for the different SEN, such as uh, those suffering from essential, uh, emotional, and uh, for other problems, we help them to add, to learn how to learn and also to provide information to parents. Many parents uh, agree that uh, occupational therapy has been very helpful. We need to pay attention to a few points. Under the current system, the therapy is uh, provided outside schools, so they have to go to a private uh, organization or hospital for uh, therapies uh, while by leaving school early. And sometimes they have to be uh, absent from uh, extracurricular activities. They need more time to catch up in their schooling, and they they have difficulties in uh, participating in the school's own activities.
And the waiting time can be uh, longer than one year because of the long queue. And therefore, we cannot identify these students and help them in a timely manner. And uh, the delay will cause more problems. Some schools would arrange for the therapists to come to schools to help. But these uh, are for short durations and for uh, isolated specific topics. So schools are not getting uh, comprehensive support. And students may be deprived of uh, suitable uh, therapy, and they may not. Uh, the schools may not make the best use of the grants under the new grant uh, student the grant system. And uh, some students are not actually benefited by the grant. We'd like to propose a school-based uh, occupational therapy system. It's been practiced elsewhere in uh, advanced countries. Teachers should be able to uh, refer uh, suspected cases to the school-based OTs, so that uh, the students can be given uh, timely assistance. Uh, the OTs can also observe uh, the behavior of students in class. We know that these students have a lot of needs. We should uh, encourage them to stimulate their feelings. And also, we we should uh, provide help to them in terms of uh, curriculum, to, uh, tail tailoring, and uh, examination time adjustments. If uh, we have space, uh, school-based OTs, uh, communication with the principal would be much better, and we also uh, make better use of the the, uh, the recess time and uh, after-school uh, service hours. We believe such a move would uh, help students to better cope with uh, learning, and students and teachers and parents would all be uh, benefited. Our further views can be found in our submission. We hope that all these students can uh, be helped so that uh, they can all have a happy learning environment. Next, we're Hip Hong Parents Association. My name is uh, Li Chung Pui. Okay. Uh, Kat Lee, I want to say something about uh, students who are served under the uh, integrated education system. We should have early identification. The waiting time is more than a year. This should be shortened to no more than three months, so as to not to, to miss the early golden opportunity to offer help to them. And there should be uh, a, a comprehensive uh, assessment report provided to the parent and the school concern. For special to pre-primary education, the waiting time is uh, more than a year. It should be shortened to not more than nine months. The, when the government uh, implements 15 years of uh, free education, all students, irrespective of disability, should be given the same education opportunity. Schools will come up with long-term integrated education policy and uh, promote a culture of uh, caring campus. The, a caring culture should be promoted on the campus so that uh, students all get all the care and respect they deserve. And uh, bullying should not be tolerate, tolerated on campus. There should be special individualized uh, development program for each SEN student. Education Bureau should come up with IEB. All diagnosed SEN students should have a dedicated long-term IEB program so that their rights in the long term that will be respected. There should be better home school cooperation. Parents should get all the information on uh, integrated education, and the SEN students and their parents should have a right to participate in decision making. The education education bureau should make use of various media such as the internet and the and the mass media in disseminating information to 
publicize human rights and remove misunderstanding against ASEAN students, teachers, or at the Education Bureau. So encourage teachers to get uh, on-the-job training. All tertiary institution offering teacher training courses must make sure that special education is a compulsory module in the program. And uh, special education training should be one of the factors to be considered for promotion. There should be senior teaching posts responsible for ASEAN affairs. We, we should allow schools to do assessment on a continuous basis so that they can uh, properly manage uh, resources and uh, support measures. Can you please uh, also give us your written submission? Next, uh, Ms. Ho Sok Yi, on the 28th of April, you had the uh, first uh, hearing to, uh, on special edu on integrated education, I was uh, with you. Now I want to talk about uh, the policies of being administered by different departments. SEN students have many needs, and their needs are uh, are catered for by different departments. On that occasion, some parents cried and complained that whenever the, there are problems, what the education bureau would do would be to issue guidelines. But what would the bureau do if uh, schools do not follow the guidelines? Would they be punished? Today, today I would like to make some concrete proposals in respect of these uh, two issues. First, uh, the fact that there are so many departments responsible for SAN students. I think for diagnosis and examination, there should be one dedicated department. I would say that the uh, CAC under the DAH should keep all the records of uh, such assessments and diagnosis. What's the purpose of the records? Well, because uh, under the privacy law, the parents or the children when they grow up uh, should have the right to have access to such uh, assessment reports in full. Now they have to ask and ask before they get one or two pages. And there should be a notification, like just like the e-health record of the HA. There should be a password for each person. And we, if we uh, allow a professional to, to use our password, they can have access to all the records and communications that can be improved. During the primary education stage, there should be a case managers called special education officers who would uh, follow up on the development of uh, these students in in the schools in terms of uh, curriculum and uh, special uh, adaptation measures. They should work with the uh, schools and there should be an IEP for each uh, SEN student. As they grow up, they proceed to primary and then secondary schools. There will be a proper articulation there should be special education officers responsible for the uh, transition and the handover from one school, one stage to another. Some schools uh, fail to implement integrated education. They are not punished, but uh, those who are practicing integrated education are actually punished. We should have a law on special education mandating all main mainstream schools to to be committed to implementing uh, integrated education. I've also got a written submission. I'm going to uh, submit this to the Secretariat after the meeting. Next, uh, we have Ms. Chao Man Cha from the Parents Association of Autistic Children in Mainstream Education Limited. I want to talk about uh, liberal studies. I'm, I think I'm the third one on this subject. I think we should uh, have a review of this requirement. These uh, SN students have a special problem, which is not very really visible. They are they are unable to consider things in a multiple dimensional uh, perspective. So it's very difficult for them to learn this subject. 
It's just like to ask uh, someone to sing who cannot really speak, and uh, you are also asking a uh, people who who can only limp along to uh, practice running. So these people uh, are eliminated, uh, but they are not at fault. My child is uh, first in IT. And uh, mathematics, uh, sometimes uh, he came first, and sometimes uh, three or fourth, or third or fourth. Chinese is okay to him, but liberal studies is a very difficult subject to him. Every time uh, he would uh, get a zero mark, uh, although he has written all the f pages uh, full. Well, you should be doing something to eliminate the uh, learning difficulties, but instead you are now victimizing these people because of their disability, because uh, university admission requires uh, li liberal studies. And now this is the denied. They don't even get past the first hurdle. Do, do the university have a special quota for SCN students? I don't think so. Not in Hong Kong anyway. For other subjects, uh, they are doing well apart from uh, liberal studies. Not that they don't want to the, take this subject, but the question is uh, how are they going to do it and how are they going to be examined if there are no support measures offered, it's just like asking a myopic students uh, to take an ex to sit for an examination without glasses. I've talked to the uh, liberal studies uh, teacher for my son, uh, and I'm I'm given to understand that uh, teaching them teaching SEN students are very difficult. I also like to talk about teacher training and publicity, public education. Yes, some teachers are getting train some training, but uh, the duration of the training courses is very short, and uh, these students cannot cope with uh, a large number of uh, SEN students. So, teacher training in terms of training hours should be strengthened. Hold. It's about time. Thank you. Next, Ms. Yifu Yu from Education Employees General Union. Chairman and members, I represent the Education Employees General Union. In mainstream schools, timetables are very tight. We insist on trying to set good examples to influence other people's lives. According to some surveys, most SEN students express that the relationship with the teachers is fine, and teachers care about them and encourage them. There are 80% of such students feeling that other students are kind to them, and among students there is mutual help and learning. They also admire differences of other people. This shows that in mainstream schools, teaching staff truly believe that learning is for everyone, so that there is respect, care, and concern among all the students and the teachers. So we can never forget the contribution from teachers. But today, there's a lack of resources for integrated education, and lack of coordination, and teachers become less motivated. And no one is really exploring the core of the issue. People are not showing enough respect for teachers, and there is lack of harmony in the society. So it is extremely difficult to launch integrated education. Half of the teachers and school principals feel that the force should come from the teachers, and there is a gap of expectation. When resources are lacking, launching integrated education, there will be gaps. Launching equal opportunities for learning doesn't mean that the same learning mode for everyone. Things should be student-oriented. Mainstream schools 
should collaborate with other relevant authorities to design special tailor-made SEN curriculum for students so that in reality in mainstream schools especially secondary schools they are tied down by about a dozen subjects and students find it hard to breathe and stakeholders cannot succeed in getting what they want. There is a lack of balance in the curriculum, especially for autistic children or students with other special needs. Other than the things I have mentioned, we urge the EB to answer the following. Our union strongly asks senior officials to stop diverting their attention. The focus should not be placed only in the classroom. Government officials need to stop passing the bucket around. We need to inject the right resources into the right places instead of passing the responsibility to the SWD and other departments. Other departments need to be practical in terms of policies and implementation. When there are mistakes, they should be eradicated right away. Thank you. Next, Mr. Chen Chao Fat. Good afternoon. I'm a parent of a nine year old autistic child. Today, I have heard from other speakers that early identification and intervention and treatment is necessary so that they should, they cannot become burdens of the society. But in the process, when my child was 18 months, I found some characteristics of autism. I have consulted the MCHCs and I was told that I was paranoid. At the age of two, I took my child to government hospitals for assessment and they said it was a suspected case. There was no real diagnosis. When he reached three years old, they used certain assessment methods to diagnose him as autistic in the whole process beginning from the time when I thought something was wrong there was a delay of 18 months it was only when he was three years old he began to queue up for some special training and the waiting time was at least six months so at four years or three and a half years he got some preliminary training but such training would only go on until he was six. So for autistic children or children with SEN, such training would not make much difference. I don't understand why during assessment, the government keeps talking about early identification. We have already done that, but the HA refused to accept our views. Their assessment is done secretly. What are the criteria? Why did they say that I was wrong? My judgment was wrong, but then at the end, they accepted I was right. And then my child was six. After some time of treatment, he needed to go to primary school. I got a reply from further assessment saying that he can go to mainstream school or special school. But then the responsibility was passed back to the parent. Can we really know for sure if my child can be admitted to mainstream school to receive integrated education? Is that good for him? At the time, he was having a very rough time. At the end, I chose mainstream school with integrated education. But once he was admitted, I realized that the school has its hands tied because of the lack of resources, the lack of proper training for the teachers, lack of knowledge about this among the teachers. Other students would try to bully my child, making it unhappy experience for my child. This system would turn our children into social burdens. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Next, Ms. Tai An Yong. Chairman, members, government officials, 
I'm from Special Education Needs Parents Association. Integrated education is a good concept, but it is not well supported. Without a full review, or if we do not have IAPO, all these disputes will only continue. I will focus on the main point, some requests from parents. We want more resources to optimize the assessment mechanism, shorten waiting time. In terms of the use of resources, there should be voices of parents instead of just focusing on figures or documents. We want to know where the money has gone. Is it making any difference? There should be different types of support other than psychiatrists, psychologists, speech therapists, doctors. We need to concentrate their efforts instead of asking the parents to run around. I hope to see some improvements inside the schools. Better teacher establishments should be set up so that they can have a dedicated person dealing with SEN students to do admin work, follow-up work, and work in collaboration with the experts. Only then can we truly offer help to the students. As for some SEN parents or who are from the grassroots, they cannot afford to pay more than 10000 a month to have training for their children. Who they can ask for help? Where can they get help? So perhaps at student funding offices or other welfare segments, you can allocate some resources to families with SEN students after means tested so that we can improve the situation for the children. In recent years, many SEN students have further the studies abroad. But if they come from poor families, they cannot afford the tuition fees. But if they have the offer, they cannot go at the end because of the lack of means. I've done some investigation in the past two years concerning offers from Taiwan. We're talking about 600 to 700 students going to Taiwanese schools and 900 in the last school year. They have registered as students in Taiwan. Is it possible that after means tested, some loans can be offered to these children? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tai. Next, Ms. Yu Ling. Good afternoon. I am a member of the SEN Parent Association. I am here to tell you my painful experience because I want to alert the Hong Kong community in terms of their knowledge about SEN students. We want these children to grow up healthily and make contribution to the society. Nine years ago, as a new immigrant, I came to Hong Kong. My three-year-old child was placed in a child care center from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. At the time, I felt that my child was a bit special, was be uh, a bit different. But because of the lack of knowledge, I did not know who else to go to, so I just told the teacher to pay some special attention. Three years later, the teacher said we need some follow-up and special assessment. So we did that a few months later. My child was promoted to P1, and the nightmare began. Inside the school, he kept missing his things, his books, his stationery, and his relationship with other students were problematic. He couldn't finish his homework. He would be doing his homework until midnight for many nights. I just wanted to jump off the building holding my child in my arms. 
we lived in total darkness. We could not see any sunlight or any future. Fortunately, we are Christians, and because of our faith, tragedy did not happen. Identification was done at a late stage for my child. Some other SAN parents told me that you should ask the school to write a report, and then perhaps we can speed up the process of helping the child. I talked to the school. The school principal and the teacher said, your child is fine. He's just naughty. So we had to wait for almost four years when my child was 10. He was diagnosed for like um, he has Asperger's syndrome and he's hyperactive. He's taken meds and his situation has improved. But seven years have been lost it and there was no solid foundation set for my child. Two thousand odd dollars is a lot of money for my family. That is huge burden. In Hong Kong, families like mine are everywhere. I urge the Hong Kong government and the society to pay more attention and concern to such students and please give us more support so that we can help the future of Hong Kong. Every child is an asset to Hong Kong. Thank you, Ms. Yu. Next, Ms. Chen Ching Han, Chairman. My child is autistic. He was diagnosed at an early stage. He went to the mainstream school, but because of his weak expression and Chinese skills, he has been bullied many times. He's been beaten up, he's been mocked. People call him a retard. I would communicate with the school, with the teachers, but the bullying went on for a long time. He's now in P5. He was beaten up in P3, in P4, and P5. It's the same. I am not sure if the teachers realize that my child is not able to tell the teacher that he felt another student brought something prohibited to school. The teacher did not have the knowledge. People thought he was just complaining. I'm the parent, but I'm not an expert. The teacher asked me, why is he always jumping around? Why can't he say the right thing at the right time? Why can't he avoid the bullies? If he has that ability, I wouldn't be here today. He was beaten up by the other students. The teacher said, tell him to stop complaining because when he complains, people will beat him up. That is how she comforted me. I felt helpless. Actually, as a parent, I also thought about jumping off the building with my child. We didn't know who to ask for help. We tried very hard to study, although there may not be any real results. I just want to be treated fairly. To a certain extent, I understand. Perhaps not every teacher has professional knowledge to teach our children. If the government tells us that my child should go to mainstream school with integrated education, when we actively participate in activities, he would just be bullied and beaten up. When we complain to the teacher, we go to the police, there will be short-term follow-up, and then nothing will happen at the end. I don't know what else we can do. I want my son to become an asset, not a burden to the community. 
I hope that he will become a positive asset as his mother. Just like his teachers, we want him to have a bright future and a good life. So I want to receive fair treatment and also fair treatment to my son. Thank you, Miss Chen, Miss Anita Lam. Good afternoon. My son is an autistic child. He is now in P two. I'm a fortunate mother. We entered a very good school, and when he entered P1, he didn't know what was happening. He uh, was troubling the other students. He was singing in class. He couldn't write anything during the tests. He could not write anything. But we're lucky because the teacher tried different things. The teacher took up some lessons on her own. I communicated continuously with the school. I wrote reports. I wrote letters to suggest a methods to help my son. And then the teacher realized that when he sits alone to do the test, he could answer correctly many of the questions. So I suddenly felt helped. The question lies on whether there is anyone to help him. So I'm very fortunate that I, my son doesn't have to study in a special school. But all this depends on the teacher who takes extra efforts to help my son. And he, the teacher, pays out of his own to take special lessons. And from three onwards, my child received um, special counseling from a, a psychologist. And I communicate very frequently with, my, with the school. I think my son does have a future. And the question is, there are different social welfare organizations doing different things. Is there a synergy? If we can enhance our knowledge and skills, we can help further our children. I have several suggestions to make. One is on teacher support. We believe that not every teacher knows what autism is about, and not every teacher has sympathy for the students. So I think that before they enter the profession, they must go through a compulsory subject on SEN. And what SEN is in theory and, and in practice. And upon graduation, they should have continuous CPD to help the teachers to enhance their knowledge. And then they can self-reflect on how they can help the children better. Such knowledge can help um, the teachers have better communication with various stakeholders and help the students more effectively. And and they that would avoid the situation where the student or where the teachers would just do their own work. Now the teachers must work must be measured. And the teachers will be motivated to uh, work harder. Parents are not like myself. Not everyone is as lucky as myself. Sorry, uh, time's up. Please complete what you want to say as soon as possible. I just want to raise one more point. The government should provide a common platform for all training institutions so that the, re the resources will not be wasted. Now, in all the talks that I attended, that there are not many teachers or school principals attending, and that is a waste of resources. If a standardized set of materials can be given to the teachers, then that would uh, work best. Thank you, Ms. Lam. Autism Recovery Network Limited, Ms. Dion Ma. Good afternoon. I thank the panel or subcommittee for inviting us to air our views. I'm a behavioral therapist, and I speak on behalf of the 50 behavioral therapists and the uh, SEN teachers, uh, parents and st uh, students. The IE education is poor. Members, the basic or underlying principle of IE has been neglected. 
Well, putting an SEN student in a mainstream school is not necessarily integrated education. Uh, the problem will not be solved by just merely the government putting resources and asking the teachers uh, to undergo training. If that is the case, then we will not be seeing the problems we are seeing today. Now, the teachers are being neglected, and the and the uh, SEN students or artistic students are being bullied and rejected. Now, IE education has been implemented for 16 years, and the government doesn't have any plans for other stakeholders in the campus to know about autism. We don't want our students to become the victims, and the government must enhance the knowledge of autism on campus and should also promote a spirit of acceptance on campus. In March this year, we hope that more teachers and parents can understand about autism, and we wanted to cooperate with the government on promoting awareness. And we also lined up with an uh, autism alliance and invited a U.S. Uh, professional to come to Hong Kong to host a seminar. And he is an expert in that field. He is a very experienced educationist. And we are providing services without any cost. But then the EDB finally ultimately refused uh, to work with us. So we just uh, finished the work within our own limited resources. Um, some hundred people have benefited from the talk. But then if the EDB has uh, responded to us more actively, proactively, and make better use of community resources, then more can stand to benefit. We don't. Uh, we don't question the EDB's determination to implement IE. But then if on campus uh, the people don't know much about IE, well, no matter how determined, determined you are, your efforts will go down the drain. Now, in our proposal, we have this proposed this autism demystification program that is tackling the blind spots at the moment. We would be using existing resources without an additional financial resources, and we can through play therapy uh, so that the people can experience for themselves what is autism. Now, without having to relocate premises, teachers and parents will learn to how to deal or interact with each other and achieve real integrated education. So please study our proposal in detail. Thank you, Ms. Ma. The, the schedule is very tight. And uh, the administration must respond. But then I would now like to open up the floor to questions by our members, and then the administration can also respond at the same time to the deputation's remarks. Uh, Tam Yu Chong, Elena Wong, Chang Kwok Chu, Kenneth Chen, Claudia Mo, and Long Yu Chong. Oh, well, it's first Long Yu Chong and then Claudia Mo. Every member, well, uh, four minutes each. Tan Yu Chung first. Well, I thank the deputations and the parents to voice their experience and views. We understand the difficulties faced by parents and teachers. I have talked to principals and teachers. They told me that they went on a study tour to Macau, which is dealing with the issue in a quite Good manner because uh, practice because Malka, Macau has uh, good resources in the government subsidized schools. There is a team of professionals taking care of a class of SEN students grouped under into one class. The class size. is around 15, whereas the, for a normal uh, class is uh, 20 people or 20 students. So they have this uh, dedicated uh, class for the SEN students. Once the the the, the SEN students have um, performed well, then they will be 
re released and go back to the other ordinary classes. I asked them whether there is a stigmatization. They said no. So does the administration have information on this type uh, or this model? I think this is quite a good solution. So can the administration respond? Under Secretary, um, uh, Deputy Secretary, please. Thank you, Chairman. I would like to thank deputations for airing their views. Our staff interact with you frequently, and we understand fully your situation. Uh, we've heard many views today. We will go back and consider them. Mr. Tam, your question. Under the integrated education system, we provide a multi-level counseling or support system. If circumstances allow, we would, in the classroom, improve the teaching and learning method to take care of SEN students. Now, if that doesn't work, the second level is that we would take them out or pull them out, and then we would use a small group model to help them. Then that's more or less the motto adopted by Macau, as what Mr. Tam suggested. But we would not automatically uh, place them in a special class once we know that they are SEN students. We would f first try to put them in a normal class. And when they reach a stage when uh, more support is found to be needed, and they have difficulties in interacting with other students, then we will um, group them into a small class or small group. And if that doesn't work again, then we would provide them with individualized services, one-on-one -on -one basis. So three tiers, is, they seem to be very clear. But then for the elected two tiers, it seems that it is not being implemented too well. But SEN students do stay in the normal classes, and teachers told us that they do have difficulty in taking care of SEN students. Other students may be affected, and there may be bullying um, happening. So can more resources be devoted to the second or third uh, tier support? Deputy Secretary, well, we ask the schools to look at the needs. Well, in this subcommittee, we will definitely touch on the issue of resources, how much is needed. As for bullying on campus, we don't think that's acceptable among the principals, teachers, the government. So we don't want bullying to happen on campus, of course. Ms. Helena Wong, thank you, Chairman. And I would like to thank so many friends coming over to express your views. We've passed the motion just now, and I hope that the Deputy Secretary can go back and, and uh, discuss it. There are several things raised. The inadequate education psychologists, a number, uh, inadequate number of social workers. Some friends also talked about uh, teacher training. Can we require all teachers to receive training on how to deal with SEN students? And also, um, the travel subsidy, well, that has to do with the SWD. Can you discuss these issues when you go back? Well, today, uh, at least two parents talked about the examination on liberal studies uh, subject. I teach liberal studies in the university. I've heard your views today. I hope that you can provide more information later. Well, and the initial design of the NSS curriculum, we neglected the needs of the SEN students. We hope that they can have analytical thinking, view things from multiple perspectives, and so on. Now, if SEN students approved to have difficulties in logical thinking, analytical thinking, then my question for the administration is, would the EDB follow up on the several things? First, parents suggested 
that would you be making adjustment to the exam paper in liberal studies a subject or can you consider waiving the liberal studies exam for SEN students? Second, have you collected evidence? Well, we have already conducted two years of uh, liberal studies uh, subjects exams. Can you look at the results of the SEN students uh, to ascertain how serious the problem is? And if such information can be gathered, then they will be incorporated in the review of the NSS curriculum. Under Secretary, please. Thank you, Chairman. Liberals studies. Well, we heard your views. For some time, we've uh, communicated with various parties on that point. The HKEAA and our curriculum design colleagues are discussing the matter in early June. We will be holding a sharing session to talk with teachers on liberal studies subject, in particular, what kind of adjustments can be made for SEN students in that subject. We will have a sharing session with teachers. We do see uh, re a special request here and uh, reasonable ex expectations on the administration to do something. Well, but of course, we have to conduct a full fledged review, the, including the curriculum and the exam. Well, we will try to do more. What about the uh, results in the past two years' exams? I don't have any information on hand. I'll go back and take a look and see if I can retrieve some information. Perhaps HKEAA? HKEAA? Well, for the moment, I don't think we have the information. We'll, we'll go back and take a look. Mr. Peter Zhang, thank you, Chairman. I would like to thank the deputations and individuals coming in the first session. I thought I knew what the subject is all about. The more I listen, the more I find that I don't understand it. And I am and I am saddened by what I heard. I don't know whether you share the same feeling in government officials. I don't plan to ask any questions. I hope the uh, government officials and the experts. Uh, perhaps it's not just for the deputy secretary, but the experts behind him. Can they respond in a positive way to the education psychologist, speech therapy? Well, many friends have uh, talked a lot. Some of the things they said are novel to us, and some of the things we already know. I hope that the administration team can have a positive response. The deputy secretary just mentioned that for the liberal studies subject, can you do something next year? Mr. Young? I perhaps I was the one who has the least knowledge of the subject. My other colleagues are very experienced in helping this uh, group of people, colleagues from SWD, DH, and XA, and they interact frequently with the SE and students. As a government department, we are constrained in many ways, say in resources, in practices. I would never say that our colleagues are not keen on helping the students or children. All of them want to help. 
Now, on Mr. Chung's point about liberal studies, we are doing something, but I can't undertake that. We can definitely do something next year. Because in the design or changes to a curriculum, we need time. And we might have to start it from, say, Form 4 or Form 5. And you, we can't do it midway. On support uh, and assess support for families or assessment of children, perhaps SWD and DH can respond. Well, it's very difficult for them to answer, Chairman. I want them to. I don't want them to answer. I want the under sec the deputy secretary to come up with a figure on the number of SEN students who have to take liberal studies exam. If the number is not uh, that big, then I think we can handle it immediately. And I don't want the administration to um, tell us that they need to consider a basket of factors. I think they can uh, deal with special issues in a special way. I think the parents have have spoken very humbly. They could have done it in a more fierce way. They could have scolded the administration officials. The parents are still hopeful that uh, some positive developments can come out of our discussions. I think the Deputy Secretary, you should think about all the suggestions that we've raised tomorrow, perhaps. Perhaps today. Okay, so all, all well, I've heard the deputations, and I will be talking to my colleagues as regards what we have done and uh, what more we can do. Uh, we're going to have a sharing session with uh, teachers on uh, what we have heard. When it comes to marking, for examination, we we'll look at the uh, systemic implications. I don't want to say that special cases are given special treatment and just give them uh, a different mark. We need some time to look into the, all these issues. Dr. Kenip Chen, today we have uh, parents, teachers, and other deputations who have spoken on the uh, way we should uh, moderate uh, the, the marks and the curriculum so that SAN students and students with special learning difficulties will be given suitable arrangements, they will be given suitable education and a, and, a, and they will be subject to a sound uh, testing uh, system so that they can proceed further in their education. So these have been issues that we have been uh, able to carry forward from previous meetings. Thank you for your views, because uh, through your views, we'll be able to take follow-up action, appropriate follow-up action. But I hope uh, the Education Bureau can also do something here. Uh, I know that the Hong Kong EAA has got uh, some special arrangements. There must be some special arrangements, otherwise uh, it would have done nothing about this. Well, I'm also a teacher. I know that uh, you must, first of all, get some training before you know how to do it, and that this is a continuous learning process so that you can be more helpful to students. When the Hong Kong Yay Aid uh, marks the scripts, or the, how can you inform those people responsible for marking the scripts? Are there arrangements to tell them that, uh, again, uh, among these uh, exam scripts, there are some with uh, SCN as a marker. Uh, it's not that I just adopt the same yardstick, and if uh, the answer it looks like this, it gets full mark, and so on and so forth. And uh, the marker doesn't make any distinction between different groups, and you just look at the uh, the answers, and uh, similar answers will get similar marks. If that's what we are doing, we are penalizing these SEN students and their teachers and their parents. 
uh, Dr. Joe. Well, maybe I can uh, give a brief response in relation to uh, the arrangements uh, of uh, moderation offered by Hong Kong EAA for SEN students. First of all, uh, a student must uh, submit an application, and after the approval is granted, there are special measures available. For example, uh, longer time will be given for answering this the, the relevant uh, paper. And now we're talking about student with uh, autism. And if the committee approves the application, and uh, we can certainly provide special arrangements. Some SEN students may have uh, problems with uh, writing. They may have difficulty in uh, recognizing certain uh, words or characters. We have uh, agreed with uh, our uh, script markers that a special treatment will be given. Uh, can you tell us more about the special considerations that you offer? Because there are so many different conditions of on the part of the students, and maybe if I can be given more time, I can elaborate. The major principle, the overriding principle, is to maintain the fairness of the examination and the specific requirements uh, pertaining to that subject. But we will also consider that uh, some students uh, cannot really f uh, do something given uh, their, stu their conditions, but we do insist that uh, the basic requirements of the subject itself will not be the affected. Mr. Leng Yu Chung, well, I thank all the deputations for sharing with us your views. And then I look at this side and listen to this side, the experts' uh, remarks and response. I would say that uh, there is two worlds separated from each other. Some parents are so worried and desperate. But on this side, they would say that uh, things are doing well, that we are doing the necessary for up action. We're making Context and we are dealing with uh, the situation in a fair manner, and we are doing something to uh, support and to offer assistance. So, Chairman, uh, is it that uh, experts on this side don't think the problems mentioned by the other side not not problems at all? Uh, so, Mr. Young, you've been talking about uh, that uh, you understand, you have been communicating with them, and you'll be doing uh, things to help them. There will be a individual uh, or group uh, counseling and instruction. Well, come to my school. I did invite you to come to my school. You didn't accept the offer. Well, if you look, want to uh, have small groups, and you also have one-to-one uh, -one instruction, how can it be done without additional resources? You may say that we need to talk about manpower and resources later, but can you really understand that uh, that the sense of urgency is such that uh, one more year of waiting is one more year lost. So what about uh, offering more assistance by the uh, Hong Kong EAA? What about giving oral answers instead of written answers? So far this cannot be done because you have been saying that you, you insist on uh, being fair. So after all that discussion, we are back to square one. We have spent so much time in our discussion, but the problems remain problems. 
after all that discussion, if our subcommittee continues to uh, have such meetings like today's meeting, uh, we are just going round and round. We've been talking about integrated education and its problems for more than 10 years. The administration, or I cannot say that they haven't done anything, but they have done so very little, very little. You give them just $10,000, the schools $10,000. How can uh, you help them, really help them? There are so few experts outside, and you're not going to provide more manpower to the schools. It's not uh, really meaningful to uh, ask you to just uh, give a little bit more each time we push hard enough. Uh, some people say that uh, integration education has been uh, a long failure story. I agree. I don't know whether you agree, uh, Chairman. Some may benefit from education in a mainstream school, but uh, the majority of them would just be frustrated. So I just hope that you would uh, sincerely review integrated education and come up with a comprehensive promotional strategy. We will continue to take up the matter and the issues with the education. Time is uh, running short. We have two more members, Mr. Claudia Maud and then Mr. Yip Kyun Yun. I uh, will do away with all the uh, peasantries. We all know what uh, the problems are. Uh, Mr. Young, this is not personal attack. It's, it's not reasonable to ask you to be responsible for all the educational failures from the very start. Dr. Helena Wong's motion to, is really asking you to provide one-stop service. I know that you cannot just uh, give a instant response that uh, you are going to do it. And you just tell us that uh, the Education Bureau uh, will be responsible, will take the lead for all education related issues. Of course, you have to. It's just a plain fact. And now parents are, ask, are being asked to go to the Education Bureau and then to SWD for some other issues. Of course, uh, issues about children are always related to education. We have experts on. Uh, on uh, pre-primary education, and we talk about the assessment, the uh, SLAC assessment before admission to primary school. I haven't heard about uh, problems about the transition from uh, primary to secondary education, but I do see uh, problems for the transition from secondary to tertiary education. So you don't expect them to receive tertiary education. And the main problem that manifests itself uh, in the form of liberal studies. Again, Mr. Young, I'm not, sure, I'm not attacking you personally. And now you're saying that uh, you are going to share some th ideas with uh, the Hong Kong EAA and teachers. Why are you doing this now? When you launch uh, the subject of liberal studies, you forgot that there are S there are SEN students. Well, it's just like claiming that uh, the Pope is Catholic. I'm sorry uh, that I may have seemed a little bit agita agitated. All mothers are women. Not all women are mothers. Oh, oh, an, uh, an ordinary person would just say, well, of course. But I have met uh, autistic uh, children in schools. Well, they can be very talented in other um, subjects. They, they could be very good at music and uh, playing the piano. But when you talk about uh, other uh, subjects, 
they may not able to understand and follow. Why don't you uh, share your ideas with parents? Not many people uh, need uh, special uh, support, and and I think the problems are faced by the parents, teachers, schools, principals. We have heard the same stories over and over, but uh, I think the blame uh, lies with uh, this organization called the Education Bureau. You have been irresponsible and now you have a small groups and you need to have assessment and you you talk about fairness to all if you want to have a fairness to all why do you have integrated education i just don't care what kind of disorder you are suffering from you are the, just another student i hope you would uh, have a uh, root and branch review of integrated education I'm, and I'm particularly mindful about uh, liberal studies please allow these uh, SANS students to get enrolled on uh, subjects and programs that they are talented in and that they will not be stopped because of liberal studies Mr. Yip Kun Yin I think uh, you found the deputations for their heartfelt uh, views. I have to declare my interest that I have a relative uh, who is suffering from uh, autism and also the mental the disability so I have uh, personal deep feelings about the subject. I'm also a, a teacher in caring for an uh, autistic uh, relative I discover that uh, I uh, was very ignorant and I share the uh, sentiment expressed by Mr. Peter Jung here. I can understand the uh, psychological uh, stress faced by family members. But if you look at it from another angle, when we finally solve uh, these problems to many parents, teachers, and students, it means uh, that they are released from a heavy burden and stress. The contrast uh, couldn't be more uh, pronounced than this. The question is how to how do we go about it? Well, I've gone through this uh, process of. Uh, understanding the government the the parents and the whole sector uh, cannot but accept that this would uh, take a long process but sometimes uh, what is frustrating is that the uh, parties concerned are not serious enough about this, they are not doing their level best and I'm t not just talking about the government but also people uh, working in the uh, education field and we have many enthusiastic and uh, responsible parents here but uh, equally there are other parents who are less so I hope government departments well, can uh, say something about some of the issues. For example, synergy. Today we are rep we have uh, representatives from a number of departments here. Uh, we want to see the collaboration between departments. When we talk about uh, problems of uh, young children, it's difficult to talk about the problems as being uh, uh, related to uh, intelligence or emotion or education or development. It's difficult to dis differentiate development of a child and education of a child. I hope uh, the departmentalization of departments should be dispensed with. We need good collaboration between departments, and the Education uh, Bureau must have this uh, sense that uh, it's not really responsible for intellectual development. And then uh, other development uh, problems, 
should be handled by other departments, and uh, th there are other issues, uh, which is which are the responsibility of uh, the SWD. Uh, today we also have uh, the representative from Hong Kong Examinations and Assessment Authority. I think we need need to get the parties to working together. It seems that uh, the sense, this sense of uh, collaboration, is not here, and they are not prepared for this. I know time is uh, is up for me. I hope uh, departments uh, would uh, come to this awareness that it f uh, we need to have you. You need to have collaboration in assessing these children, and then. Uh, the, and then uh, gradually, the, and uh, sometime down the road, you have to take have to take up various responsibilities. Well, many members and uh, deputations have uh, pointed out that uh, the education system is dominated by examinations. So it's not that education can change your fate, but uh, examination can. We talk about uh, students with uh, special learning difficulties, special educational needs. They are disadvantaged. When they were born, they might get assessment in the MCHC or HA hospitals, and if they are assessed to be in need, they would have to ask the SWD to get to give them services. When they are admitted to schools, uh, the responsibility. Is uh, on the education bureau, but the uh, relevant organisations do not uh, coordinate among themselves, and they have great difficulties and problems with examinations. The learning and the uh, teaching are centred around examinations. Coming to Dr. Wong's uh, motion, which uh, requests. That the education the bureaus uh, set up a one-stop service by coordinating the interdepartmental program or team, so as to take better care of uh, uh, send students in uh, their development and education. Uh, we have overrun by some uh, by more than ten minutes. We have another session coming up, so we must move on. I hope that the Education Bureau would uh, seriously to follow up on our motion. I would like to get a written response concerning uh, the request that we have put forward, and also the uh, issues raised by the, the deputations. Let's proceed to the second session, and then we would uh, sum up the views of deputations for onward transmission to the Education Bureau, and I hope uh, the Education Bureau can uh, respond to these uh, in due course. Uh, we are now going to have a break. Please return at 7.